Welcome to a mini lecture about the Gerritz matrix. Um, this is a potentially simpler way to compute the determinant. Um, what's the problem with computing the determinant? Well, if you think about it, you end up computing uh, the determinant of a big M by M matrix where uh, your original diagram had M plus one crossings. In other words, if you had a diagram with seven crossings, then the determinant, you have to compute it using a six by six matrix. And computing uh, determinants of six by six matrices while routine is not pleasant. Uh, the Gerritz matrix, on the other hand, is typically smaller. Uh, so here's what we do. Over here on the left, I've written you the recipe for computing DETL using the Gerritz matrix. And we're going to walk through it in an example. So here's how to compute the determinant using the Gerritz matrix. So first of all, we choose a connected diagram of our link L. Connected means that uh, I can't separate the diagram into two parts that don't cross each other. Uh, so let's do the same link that we did uh, the determinant of before. So here's the diagram. There. Next, chessboard diagram. Okay, so experience shows that it's best that the diagram be in white, and then I chessboard it in grey. So let's do that. Um, so let's remember how we chessboard. Uh, we choose a region to colour in. Actually, I'm going to choose a different region. Uh, let's choose a region to colour in. Um, then the regions adjacent to that, I have to leave not colored in. So this I can't color in, this I can't color in, this I can't color in, and neither this one. And have I finished chessboarding the matrix, uh, chessboarding the diagram? No. Remember that the outside is always a region, whether we like it or not. Um, so we must also chessboard that. Let's put some bounds on it just so you don't go too crazy. And let's go around chessboarding this guy. This won't look super nice, but uh, I think we can all live with it. Nope, it looks horrible, but uh, let's just grin and bear it. Okay, and then I'm going to unshade. Whoops, what happened there? I'm going to unshade. Sorry, I'm going to remove those little dots that I helped uh, that helped me there. Okay. Next, what's next? We label the unshaded regions. Uh, we're going to label them zero up to m. In this case, zero up to three. So let's do that now. Zero. Whoops. Zero, one, two, three. Next step, put signs on all the crossings. Uh, so you see, uh, at every crossing, let's pick this one here, at every crossing, there's two, there's two shaded regions opposite one another. And then the crossing between them goes one of two ways. Well, if I, if I stack the shaded parts one on top of the other, then either the overcrossing goes from left to right, or it goes from right to left. If it goes from left to right, we give it sign plus one, and if it goes from right to left, we give it sign minus one. Um, so let's do that at the crossing where three and two meet. Um, well, if I want to stack the regions one on top of the other, then I then I orient my head so that it's pointing up along this arrow, and then you see that the uh, that the overcrossing goes from right to left across the arrow from right to left. Um, so if we get a shot of that we see that this guy has label minus one. And in fact, let's do that in white. And in fact, all the crossings, if you work it out yourself, you'll see that they all have sign minus one. So there we were putting the signs on the crossings. Next step, write down the matrix G plus. And the recipe for G plus is down here. Let's see if I can successfully draw a rectangle. 
I think it's going to reject my rectangle, but let's hope for the best. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so there's the definition of G plus. What is it? Uh, well, let me write down the skeleton of G plus for you so you can see what's going on. It's going to have rows labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, the same as the regions, and it's going to have columns labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, the same as the regions. And then what do I put, for example, in entry, uh, let's do 1, 2, there, 1 down and 2 across. Well, 1 is not equal to 2, so I'm in the first case, I'm looking at this is the recipe for g plus i j, where i is not equal to j. Uh, so I take the sum of the signs of the crossings where regions i and j meet. The sum of the signs of the crossings where regions i and j meet. Um, so in this case, I look for the sum of the signs of the crossings where regions 1 and 2 meet. Well, 1 meets 2 exactly in one crossing, it's here, and the sign is minus 1. So the sum of those signs is just minus 1. Now what do I put in entry 1, 1? Well, in that case, I'm looking, at the, the, I'm looking at the ijth entry where i equals j, so I'm in the second case. And there I take minus the sum of the signs around region i. So in this case, I look at region, I'm looking at 1, 1, I look at region 1, I look at the signs all the way around it. There's minus 1, minus 1, they add up to minus 2, and I take minus that, which gives me 2. Uh, let's keep going. What's in entry 1, 0? That's uh, the sum of the signs of the crossings where regions 1 and 0 meet. Well, regions 1 and 0 meet at only one crossing, and its sign is minus 1, so I get minus 1 there. And finally, what goes in entry 1, 3? Um, well, I look at the all the crossings where region 1 meets region 3. Here's region 1. Here's region 3. They don't meet anywhere. So the sum of those signs, the sum of no things, is 0. There. Now, look carefully. This definition of gij, it's symmetric in i and j. In other words, if I flip i and j, if I interchange them, I get the same entry. That tells me that the column uh, column number one looks exactly like row number one. Uh, so I can put these entries in here. And now, quick sanity check, you should find that if you add up along any row, you get zero, or if you add up along any column, you get zero. And that's the case here, which is good. Okay, so, challenge for you, uh, fill in the rest of the Guris matrix. Pause the video and have a go. So here are my answers. Uh, around region 0, there are 2 minus 1, so we get minus 2. Oh, this looks... No, we get minus minus 2, which is plus 2. Uh, between, between region 0 and 2, there are no crossings, so we get 0. But between 0 and 3, there's one crossing, sign minus 1, so we get minus 1. And then I could fill in uh, a copy of that row as the column now, 0, minus 1. Next, around 2, there's 2 minus 1s, so we get minus 2, and minus that is 2. Whereas between 2 and 3, there's a single minus 1. And then around region 3, there's 2 minus 1s, um, so we uh, add those up to get minus 2 and we negate it to get 2. So this is G+, plus, and I just referred to it as the Guris matrix. It's the Guris matrix. It's not. This is the G+, plus matrix. Uh, the next step is the Guris matrix. Six, delete a row and column, any row and column you like, to get the Guris matrix G. So this, is the, this thing that's coming up next is the Guris matrix G. So let's do that. G, and which row and column shall we delete? Um, the first ones, for argument's sake. Often there's a good choice that'll make life easier, so think carefully when you do choose what to delete. Um, and then we're going to get 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, like that. 
So then debt L is the absolute value. Sorry, this is step seven. I went on to without saying. Debt L is the absolute value of the determinant of G. So debt L is the absolute value of debt G, which is what? Uh, well, it's two times the determinant of, uh, oops, let's do it this way, two times two minus one minus one two plus one, I'm expanding along the top row, uh, plus one times the determinant of minus one zero minus one two uh, plus zero times the determinant of minus one zero two minus one which is 2 times 4 minus 1 plus 1 times uh, minus 2 minus 0 times minus 1 plus 0, so I'm ignoring it, uh, which is 6 minus 2, which is 4. Ah, I lost all my absolute values. So let's not forget those. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go, which is four. Okay, so that's using the Gerritz matrix. Now, um, this feels like a load of rubbish because I ended up computing the determinant of a three by three matrix. That's no simpler than what we did before when we computed it using the coloring matrix. Well, um, that's because I made a foolish choice of chessboarding at the very start. So if I make a different choice of chessboarding, Let's see if we can manipulate this correctly. Uh, let's get rid of you and you. you. Whoopsie dups. Sorry, a little bit of housekeeping here. Let's start again with another copy of our diagram. Let's choose a different chessboarding this time, uh, where we color in this region. So we don't color in the outside, we don't color in the inside, but we do color in the other four lobes. Okay, let's get sure of those. So here's a different chessboarding. That was steps one and two. Um, now let's label the regions. Uh, there's the outside region, call it zero, and the inside region, call it one. Um, next, next, let's put the signs on. Well, these crossings all have the same sign plus one. It turns out. Let's move the name of region zero a bit. So now my G plus, it's not at all four by four, it's two by two. Zero, one, zero, one. Uh, in the zero, zero entry, I get the sum of the signs around region zero. Well, those are four plus ones, so we get minus four. Between, zero, between region zero and one, there are four plus ones, so I get four, that's a four. And similarly, this is a minus four. So what's G now? Oops, let's redo that. What's G? It's what I get by deleting a row and column from G plus. Well, let's delete uh, this row and this column. Then what is G? It's this one by one matrix with entry minus four. So now, the determinant of L that's the determinant of G, which is the determinant, the absolute value of the determinant of G, which is the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix with the single entry minus four. Now, you've probably never computed the determinant of a one by one matrix before, um, but it's really easy. The determinant of a one by one matrix is the entry of that matrix. In this case, minus four, and its absolute value is four. So, you see, if you choose your chessboard in cleverly, so that there are very few regions very few unshaded regions, then this computation is super quick. Okay, so that's the end of the mini lecture.